Next, we will discuss how to find the probabilities of compound events if the probability of the original event or events are given. Definition Mutually exclusive or disjoint events are the events that have no common outcomes. For example, in the experiment of rolling a die with the following sample space, let A be an event 1, 3, and B be an event 4, 6, and C be an event 1, 3, and 6. A and B are said to be mutually exclusive or disjoint because they have no common outcomes. The same cannot be said about the events A and C and B and C, because they share at least one common outcome. Here is another example. In the experiment of tossing two coins with the following sample space, let A be an event heads heads or heads tails, B be an event heads heads or tails tails, and C be an event tails tails. A and C are said to be mutually exclusive or disjoint because they have no common outcomes. The same cannot be said about the events A and B and B and C because they share at least one common outcome. A few more remarks about mutually exclusive events. A pair of events are mutually exclusive if their intersection is empty, and vice versa. This is the only way to find out whether a pair of events are mutually exclusive or not. Also, an event E and its complement are mutually exclusive always, because their intersection is equal to zero by the definition. The purpose of developing the probability rules is to be able to determine the probabilities of the complements, the union, and the intersection of events A and B from the probabilities of the events A and B. That is, to be able to find the probabilities of compound events if the probabilities of the original events are given. Consider the union of two mutually exclusive events, A and B, as it is shown on the Venn diagram. Recall that the areas of the regions represent the probabilities of the corresponding events. So the area of the union of A and B is equal to the sum of the areas of A and B. In other words, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. This relation is called the special addition rule. What makes it special is the fact that it only applies to mutually exclusive events. For example, if A and B are disjoint and the probability of A is equal to 0.2 and the probability of B is equal to 0.5, then the probability of the union of A and B is equal to the sum of 0.2 and 0.5, which is 0.7. Also, if C and D are disjoint and the probability of C is 0.3, and the probability of D is 0.6, then the probability of the union of C and D is equal to the sum of 0.3 and 0.6, which is 0.9. Next, let's consider the union of two events, A and B, that are not necessarily mutually exclusive, as it is shown on the Venn diagram. Notice that the special addition rule doesn't work in this case because the combined area of A and B exceeds the area of the union. The good news is that we know exactly the difference between the two sides of this inequality. So the area of the union A and B is equal to the sum of the areas of A and B minus the area of the intersection. In other words, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection. This relation is called the general addition rule. What makes it general is the fact that it applies regardless of whether the events are mutually exclusive or not. For example, if the probability of an intersection of A and B is 0.1, the probability of A is 0.2, and the probability of B is 0.5, then the probability of the union will be 0.2 plus 0.5 minus 0.1, which is 0.6. Another example, if the probability of C and D is 0.2, the probability of C is 0.3 and the probability of D is 0.6, then the probability of the union is 0.3 plus 0.6 minus 0.2, which is 0.7. Finally, we will discuss the complementary rule. Consider an event E and its complementary event as it is shown on the Venn diagram. Again, 
Recall that the areas of the regions represent the probabilities of the corresponding events. And since the total area is equal to 1, it is fair to say that the probability of event E plus the probability of its complementary event is equal to 1. This relation is called the complementary rule. We can use this relation to find the probability of the complementary event of E by subtracting the probability of E from 1. For example, if the probability of rain is 0.2, then the probability of not rain is 1 minus 0.2, which is 0.8. Another example, if the probability of something being late is 0.01, then the probability of it not being late is 1 minus 0.01, which is 0.99. We discussed the complementary rule and the special and general addition rules that allow us to find the probability of the complementary event and the union of two events.